would you say that there are so so we've talked a little bit about some of the commonalities between you know discussion of sin in the Hebrew Bible and the way that we view sin today, or the way that you know people tend to relate to sin. What would you say are, are some of the real differences that you found when you were you know looking into how the Hebrew Bible talks about sin? Were there things that you found where like oh that's a real disconnect? That's just something that you know doesn't necessarily resonate today that we sort of you know dropped off or we don't employ as readily. Yeah, I mean there there are kind of a number of things, and these obviously are rooted in. The differences between ancient Israelite culture and, and modern culture. Um, to start with a more subtle example, uh, one, I, this is kind of part of the, the argument of the book as well in, in the um, discussion of sin as an account, um, I make this distinction between sin as account and sin as debt. So um, the debt metaphor seems to be what is um what comes more naturally to us when we talk about sin right sin as you know when you commit a sin whether individually or collectively you incur a debt that then has to be repaid um at some point so that that's the kind of language that i think when it does come up in our public discourse or religious discourse um that's the idea that is most natural. Whereas in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, um, it, it's not so much uh, quite yet the, the idea of sin as kind of an individual, um, sort of a debt that the sinner repays, right? Uh, that that mm -hmm. actually comes later in later Jewish and Christian interpretations subsequent to the Hebrew Bible. The, the idea alive in the Hebrew Bible is really kind of this idea of God as kind of a heavenly king keeping records and God repaying sin, right? So the repayment is actually not not focused on this, the sinner's responsibility to repay, although I'm not saying that idea would have been completely absent, but the language has to do with, oh, you've sinned, the repayment you're going to get in terms of punishment is going to be commensurate to the sin. So that's just one example. Um, yeah, you, you say in, the, in that section that like God is expected to return sinful deeds in equivalent measure. Right. Um, and that there is this sort of, you know, uh, almost a one-to-one -one relationship. Like, is there any, did you find any allowance for God to forgive sins or sort of not, like not mete out a fitting punishment, you know, deliver punishment less than you know, is worth or was it yeah. really, like, is that more of a, a modern concept? Well, well, no, that, that is um, in the Bible. So, but that's also described couched in the same language. So when God does that, he erases the sin. So we have language hmm. in, in the Psalms particular, God wipes away. I think there um, it's not so much the wiping away of a stain as he's erasing, I don't know, a tablet or, you know, um, kind of ink from, kind of an, an ancient document, yeah. right? Yeah, so so it's erasing the record is the language there. So, I mean, God in the Bible reserves the right, I guess, to, um, you know, just like any ancient king, right, has the choice <laughs> in any given instance, right, to uh, exercise mercy, uh, kind of to make that particular decision. So, so really, the other part of the metaphor is God imagined as this ancient Near Eastern monarch, uh, kind, mm -hmm. of, uh, kind of fulfilling the roles and described in the same kind of language that um, ancient kings uh, or used of ancient kings. Uh, so you do see that, but um, kind of the difference, again, kind of in the ancient versus modern conception has to do with where the focus is. I mean, is, is it the sinner's initiative to be naturally be able to repay the debt because once you have this idea of debt um it's not that god is removed from the picture but um kind of the the economy right of dealing with that sin doesn't primarily depend uh kind of as much on god as on the individual right at least that's not the focus of the language so there, there's, you know, more to tease out there, obviously, but um, that would be one. Experience.